The Envision readers have followed this link to meet you or learn more. So tell us, what is the inspiration behind Let's Get to Second Base? Yeah, so first off, thank you. Thank you for following the link to get here. <laughs> Secondly, back to your question, the inspiration behind getting to second base comes from a patient that I had a long time ago named Sheree. Mm -hmm. And the topic of this kind of looming feeling is really important because I've witnessed countless doctors and opticians develop this kind of fear of being viewed as salesy. And for most of us, this mentality kind of, you know, changes over time so gradually that we don't even realize it. Now, early on in my career, I had a run in with this lady named Sheree and she was a widow in her late sixties, very beautiful, very confident mm. and somewhat intimidating to most, <laughs> but I was intrigued by her. Um, she brought in an outside prescription when she came in and uh, she had said that uh, the other opticals that she visited had no style and um, that speaking with them made her question their overall intelligence. <laughs> No pressure, right? <laughs> so in picking out glasses, uh, Shereen and I had tried on some styles. I told her that we were going to get her the clearest vision possible, minimize the glare, and have the best protection against scratch resistance. And then I told her that her option A frame choice was going to be about $1,100, and her option B frame choice with the lenses was going to be about $800. And you know what she said? She said, thank you. She thanked me for telling her what I recommended. She also appreciated that she didn't feel like she was on a game show trying to estimate the total cost being added up in her head like the other opticals were doing to her. And when she said thank you, I honestly almost started to cry. <laughs> I told Cherie that I had dealt with a woman who had purchased glasses from um, one of my opticians and insisted on speaking with the manager and demanded her $175 back that she paid for glasses because we were ripping her off. And as I was telling Cherie how um, refreshing it was to have this compliment, especially when I had just quoted her on such a high price, Cherie stopped me and said, oh honey, you've got it wrong. It has absolutely nothing to do with the price. You presented these to me with such confidence that I know I'm going to love them and people will pay for that value. And if you can teach your team to have that level of confidence too, you won't have to deal with any behavior like that. <laughs> and she was so right. And in eye care, we fear getting our faces bitten off by a patient. Rather than taking confidence in our stance and our expertise, we tread lightly and we maybe recommend that, you know, $175 frame instead of the $300 frame for fear of, you know, the patient freaking out. We make partial recommendations. We offer the meh anti-reflective treatment because the best one is $60 more. Or we go to the progressive that some people like because it's $100 less than that progressive that pretty much everybody likes. So honestly, I'm thankful I met Cherie. She gave me a whole new perspective. That moment with Cherie helped me to really understand that um, how we handle things in our optical is a mindset. And this unique mindset is um, what I've carried with me through all of my optical years, through my coaching, through my speaking, through my repping years, and now through Respexi. And, and this is what I teach our members. We develop confident teams. All right, now that we got all the introductions out of the way last month, let's get into the real stuff. The idea that they can give one number of what all opticals should be turning their inventory at is total bullshit. I said bullshit. <laughs> this month's sales column is about properly managing your inventory. In its most simple form, it's basically having more of what sells and get rid of what doesn't.